Hey everyone, so I'm back again with a bit of a different video, and although this particular video doesn't have a focus on Yu-Gi-Oh, I'm going to talk about how this might affect Yu-Gi-Oh as well, especially since this article by The Guardian does talk about an incident that kinda happened with Yu-Gi-Oh cards that's similar in effect. But this video has to do with the recent Pokemon craze where Target will stop selling Pokemon cards in US stores because of the abundance of caution over threats to staff. A shopper who was at the Target during the parking lot incident told Fox News at the time, It's kind of sad for the kids. It just sounds kind of ridiculous that adults go into a fight in a parking lot about trading cards. Target confirmed the decision in a statement to comic book and games website Bleeding Cool that the safety of our guests and our team is our top priority, it said. And out of an abundance of caution, we've decided to temporarily suspend the sale of MLB, NFL, NBA, and Pokemon trading cards within our stores, effective May 14th. Guests can continue to shop these cards online at Target.com. Joe Maddalena, the executive vice president at Texas-based Heritage Auctions, explained that the skyrocketing resale value of the cards, where he was telling Rotors, when COVID-19 hit, a lot of Gen X and Millennials were looking for things to do, and we found a lot of these guys and girls started playing Pokemon again because they grew up with it. Earlier this year, Target limited the number of packs per person to three and then to one. The store had to stop people from camping outside overnight when trading cards were restocked, as reported by The Verge. But this is where things get crazy. And this is the part that has to do with the particular Yu-Gi-Oh incident that I was talking about earlier. Earlier this year in Japan, a man broke into a trading card shop at dawn by climbing down a rope he tied to the roof of a six-story building. He then stole 80 Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh cards worth more than 9,000 US dollars. Anyways, the guy who pulled off the heist was later arrested and he said, I was in my high school's rock climbing club so I wasn't afraid of heights, as he told the police. But that pretty much brings us to the end of the article. But what are my thoughts? I thought it was pretty crazy that fights even broke out to begin with, especially when it was reported that someone pulled a gun. That's just crazy to me. But honestly, it kind of reminds me of some of the toxic behavior that some toxic players exhibit in the Yu-Gi-Oh community. And I'm honestly surprised that it wasn't Yu-Gi-Oh players who did it first. Though, that's not to say that the community as a whole acts like this. I'm just saying that if there's any subset of toxic players in a fan base, it makes sense that toxic Yu-Gi-Oh players would be doing this, at least from my experience. But I guess we already kind of have an instance of this, since the article pointed out that one guy in Japan stole both Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon cards after climbing down a six-story building. That's just ludicrous to me, and it just seems straight up out of a cartoon, comic book, or movie to be honest. And it kind of does remind me of a scene where Rex and Weevil break into Yugi's house so that they can attempt to steal the Egyptian god cards. I knew people were willing to stake out buildings like it was described in the article, but I didn't actually think it got to the point of literally scaling a building and breaking in. However, taking all of this into account, I can see this becoming more of a thing in Yu-Gi-Oh, especially in the community, and especially since I've seen similar behavior from my own personal experience. And I hope Paul from Team APS is right about this, in terms of it not happening in Yu-Gi-Oh. He initially made a tweet about this, which is how I caught wind of the whole situation. But, unfortunately, I do see this happening with Yu-Gi-Oh players in the future, being how toxic some players can get. But here's hoping that it doesn't come to that. I know people are bored during the pandemic, and I think it's great that card games are growing more because of the pandemic. That just makes sense. But, man, not like this. But I remember something similar happening to a friend of mine not too long ago. I think he was trying to buy a Wind Charmer starter deck or the Charmer starter deck in general. But basically he couldn't find anything, even other Yu-Gi-Oh products. And I can only assume the same phenomena is happening here. 
So it may seem that it's already arrived at Yu-Gi-Oh. This kind of reminds me of the situation where people were buying up McDonald's Happy Meals because each Happy Meal contained a pack of Pokemon cards for Pokemon's 25th anniversary. People were so eager to get a hold of these cards that McDonald's had to even put a limit to the amount of Happy Meals per customer. I think it even got so bad that the cards were even getting scalped on eBay and people were even creating scams around these scalped cards just so they can make a quick buck. And it got worse because I think even law enforcement had to be involved in the situation because people were staking out the McDonald's so that they could get a hold of these cards and I think they just became very unruly because of it. It was something crazy like people were even keeping tabs on which McDonald's had Pokemon cards. Yeah, I think even the cops had to be called in because these people were becoming so unruly that they were even traveling long distances just to get a hold of these Happy Meals. And they mostly threw the food away, which is so incredibly wasteful. And honestly, these stories really do resemble how the current situation is happening at Target, being that people are staking out the Target. But man, this is crazy, and hopefully the same thing doesn't happen with Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Especially if Yu-Gi-Oh has an anniversary celebration of sort. But with that, it pretty much wraps up this sort of crazy news related video. If you would like to support more content like this in the future, you can do so at my Necromancer1040 Patreon link down below. I normally post it in the description, and you can check it there along with the other cool things I normally post down below. And with that, thank you so much for watching, thank you so much for your support, and I'll catch you in the next one. Alright, take care.